Hello, my name is Sarah Templeton and I am diagnosed with ADHD and also severe dyspraxia, dyscalculia and sensory processing disorder. Um, I'm also a counsellor, fully qualified and a fully qualified coach and CBT, CBT therapist. And I'd like to talk to you today about the situation in the prison system. Not a lot of people know this, but those of us that do know it are horrified. The prisons are packed with ADHD. A lot of it diagnosed, but way more of it undiagnosed. People who put facts and figures on this are wrong. Nobody knows exactly how many people in the prison service or in prison have actually got ADHD. The numbers that people will tout around are things like 25% or 30% of young offenders have ADHD. Wrong. Some people say 25% of the entire prison population have ADHD. Wrong. The reason why I know it's wrong is that because most of these people who've got ADHD don't even know they've got it. I've worked in four prisons, two of them adult male prisons and two young offender institutes, one of which was also an adult male prison. So I've worked with boys from 19 up to 40s. And the vast majority of these are ADHD. I'll give you one example from Aylesbury Young Offenders. In the year I worked there as a counsellor, I had six clients. Of those six, three had been diagnosed as children, but none of them were on the medication. Two of the six, I've gone on to get diagnosed ADHD on the outside. So that is five out of six clients at Aylesbury Young Offenders who were ADHD. I think as a very rough guide, I always say it's probably three in four people in young offender institutes have got ADHD. That's just a very rough guess from working with hundreds and thousands of them. Because not only have I worked in four prisons, I've also for the past 30 years volunteered with the homeless, with ex-offenders and with addicts. Now, all of those ex-offenders I've worked with, and actually all the homeless people as well, and that's male and female, they've all been ADHD. So when I say that when I, th I think it's roughly three in four in, in young offenders who've got ADHD, that's a guess. However, I know a lady who is a mental health nurse. She has worked in the adult male prison environment for 20 years. Now, her estimation is 85% of people in prison have ADHD. Now, that's a figure. It's an estimation, but it's one that is based on fact. It is based on the amount of people she has seen in 20 years who are ADHD and are in prison. I also know a psychiatrist who worked in a prison for six years. He said he spent all day, every day for six years diagnosing people with ADHD, day in, day out, diagnosing, 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 diagnosing. In the end, he said to me that he had to leave because although he'd been doing it for six years and he knew that there was a massive need for it because there were these thousands of people trapped in the prison system with ADHD, he was worn out after six years of doing it. So everybody in the know, everybody who's worked in prisons, everybody who has been a counsellor in prisons, prison officers, healthcare, lots of people know that the prisons are packed with ADHD, but nobody is yet doing anything about it. And this annoys me, annoys me intensely, because there are so many boys and adults that I know, personally, that I know, who are stuck in the prison system because they just can't stop doing petty crime when they come out. I'll give you a very good, well, I've got some examples for you. One was a boy who was diagnosed as a child. When he was due to come out of Aylesbury Prison, I linked him up with a housing charity who were going to house him and going to help him for the next two years to stay out of prison. The psychologist at Aylesbury Prison had other ideas and she banned that from happening purely because she was a nasty piece of work and she didn't want any, any help for these boys. So she completely kiboshed that. So when that boy did come out of prison, he didn't get any help with the housing and within 24 hours he was back in prison because the first thing he'd done was come out, get drunk, go on the rob, 
and get put back in prison. And he was back in prison for 18 months. Now, had that boy who was diagnosed as a child been on ADHD medication, it's much less likely that he would have committed crime the day he came out of prison. So that's one example. Another example, somebody who was 33, who I first worked with in Portland prison. He'd been in and out of prison since he was about 17, I think. I met him when he was in his very early 30s. When he was out of prison, I spoke to his probation officer one day and I said, look, it's your job to keep him out of prison. I'm going to tell you what will keep him out. And that is getting him diagnosed and medicated. The probation officer thanked me. She said, Sarah, you're the only person who's rung up here in 20 years with anything faintly useful. So she said, leave it with me. I'm going to get this boy on ADHD meds. And she did. Somehow, I've no idea how, she got this boy two weeks worth of ADHD meds. She put him on ADHD meds. And during that fortnight, he rang me up and he said these words. I will never forget these words. He said, Sarah, I can't guarantee it, but I think if I've been on this medication all my life, I don't think I'd have committed any of those crimes because I feel completely different. Now, that was a boy who'd been in and out of prison all his life. And he is currently back in prison for something he'd done before his probation put him on those ADHD meds. Now, that's a boy who was a prolific offender in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Loads and loads and loads of, of, of silly, silly crime. Nicking cars, offending, drug stuff. Um, criminal damage, all, you know, n no murders, rapes, none of that. Just silly, silly, silly stuff, but loads of it, which is very typical for ADHD people. So if that one boy can say to me, I don't think I would have committed any of that crime because I feel completely differently, how many more people don't need to be in prison because they aren't assessed and diagnosed and on the right meds? Now, that boy, with his probation, we fought. When he got put back in prison, I and his probation, we fought for the local ADHD assessment centre to go into the prison and diagnose him, which they did. It was a battle. I can't begin to tell you how many letters, phone calls, emails we had to send to get that to happen. But after about, it must have been the best part of a year, eventually they went into the prison and they diagnosed him and put him on the meds. They need to do that times about, I don't know, 100,000 or however many. I haven't got a clue how many offenders there are in prison in the UK. I probably should know, but I don't. But the vast majority of them have got ADHD. But what the prison service are doing instead is they're dying a lot, diagnosing a lot of them with EUPD, which stands for Emotionally Unstable Personality Disorder. Now, why do they do this? There's two ways of looking at it. Do they do it out of ignorance? genuine ignorance because they don't understand adult ADHD. Perhaps they've not been trained in it. They've only been diagnosing adults with ADHD since 2009. So perhaps these people genuinely don't know about ADHD and they genuinely think that the emotional dysregulation, which is the biggest part of ADHD, they mistake that for emotionally unstable personality disorder. So there's a lot of boys in prison walking around with these wrong diagnoses. They've got unstable personality disorder, histrionic, uh, schizoaffective, all these different personality disorders they're labelled with when actually it's ADHD. Now, there's, as I say, two ways of looking at it. Is it ignorance and the genuine ignorance that the, the healthcare people haven't been trained in adult ADHD, so they don't know how to spot it? Or more worrying is it because ADHD medication costs money? ADHD medication costs money. Not only that, but it has street value in prison because ADHD medication is speed, basically. It's, it's what people would take as speed. So there are all sorts of different ADHD meds, and I'm not going to go into them now, but there's loads and loads of stimulants and non-stimulants. But a lot of them, a lot of ADHD medication has street value. And what boys were doing on ADHD meds before were taking the ADHD meds, coughing it up and selling it. However, we can get around that because the, the, the number one medication for ADHD now is Elvance, and Elvance comes in capsule form. So you can open the capsule, put it in liquid and make a boy drink it. And no boy in the world is going to sick up his orange juice and give it to somebody else. That's not going to happen. But the pills, yes, they could. So are they misdiagnosing people in prison through ignorance or are they doing it because they don't want the hassle of, of medicating ADHD people and also it costs money? ADHD medication isn't cheap. It's very effective, but it isn't cheap.
So I don't know yet the answer to this, but I do know that still in the prison service today, and I'm doing this in February 2022, I know that there are hundreds, if not, well, definitely thousands, and I would imagine tens of thousands, of people stuck in the prison system with the wrong diagnosis, most definitely on the wrong medication, and a lot of them will be going back there. Because as soon as they come out, they're risk-taking, thrill-seeking, not thinking of the consequences, thinking they know best, wanting everything now. Saving up doesn't happen with ADHD people. If they want something, they want it now. So that's why boys nick things, because they just can't wait. And the massive one is not thinking of the consequences. ADHD people don't naturally think of the consequences. So all these boys who are sitting in prison who are going to, all of them itching to get out, itching, itching, itching. And then when they get out, they commit these crimes within a day or two. I know numerous boys who've been out for a day and are back in. You know, se several of my boys go, oh, I've got the record. I've been in and out three times, uh, within 24 hours, three times. I've done it more than my mates. You know, they, they know that they'll be straight out, committing crime again and straight back in. It's absolutely ludicrous. So, I've set up a charity now called ADHD Liberty. Even that took doing. It took us five applications to the Charity Commission. We were knocked back four times. In the end, I got a black solicitor on it. I said, you know a thing or two about discrimination. I think we're being discriminated because we want to keep ADHD people out of prison. I hope that's not the case, but I suspect it is. So he put in the last application and after five times, we were allowed to set up a charity to keep ADHD people out of prison. But it took five applications. What does that tell you? What people think where ADHD people should be. So we've now set up this charity. We've got phenomenal people involved. For starters, we've got two serving Met police officers who are both diagnosed ADHD. We have somebody in Sussex police who is also diagnosed ADHD. We have an ADHD psychiatrist who specialises in the link between addiction and ADHD, and he's diagnosed ADHD as well. We have a neuro consultant. We have a neuro consultant from a very, very well-known hospital in this country. She was seeing boys being brought into her with head injuries from the prisons, the same boys over and over and over again. She actually then realised that, hang on, these boys have all got ADHD. This is why they can't stop punching each other. This is why they can't stop... They can't stop doing what they're doing because it's the ADHD. So she asked the powers that be, could she please diagnose these people? She's a neuro consultant. She's able to diagnose. She was told, no, they're not worth it. As in, they're offenders. So they're not worth it. This incensed her so much that she Googled until she found me. And she said, are you the Sarah Templeton that's very angry about the situation in prisons with ADHD? And I said, yep, that's me. Why? And then she said, I'm livid. I'm steaming. They told me these boys aren't worth it. They're not worth being diagnosed because they are offenders. So we have a fantastic team on ADHD Liberty now. And our mission now is to get everybody tested for ADHD when they go into a police station for the first time and again if they go again and also for boys to be tested on induction wings induction wings in prisons not a lot of people know this except those of us who've worked in there everybody who goes into prison for the first time or is moved from another prison which happens all the time they're constantly shuffling people around every single time they move prison they have to go on an induction wing the boys sit on this induction wing for two weeks and they're mostly bored stiff because they're not allowed to go to education, they're not allowed to go to the gym, they're not allowed to go to work, they're not allowed to go to the library, they're not allowed to do anything, they're not allowed visits, they're not allowed anything. All they're allowed to do on that wing is be tested. So they are testing them for their sight, their hearing, their English, their maths, whether they hear voices, uh, whether they self-harm. So the, these tests take a few hours and they're sitting there for a fortnight. And the one thing they are not being tested for is the one thing nearly all of them have got, ADHD. So why aren't they testing them? I've sat in front of the government. I've sat in front of the justice minister. I've done a speech to him and said, this is crazy. You're testing them for everything except the one thing most of them have got. He's agreed with me. Now, sadly, that justice minister lost his job before COVID and then COVID hit. So we've been very held back. 
but we aren't anymore. We are now a registered charity and we are now pushing to get the government to agree that we know they already agree. We know that they know there's a lot of ADHD in prisons and they know that we're not testing for it. But what we haven't yet managed to do is is make sure the government put this in place in the in the prisons but also in the police stations if we can catch people the first time they offend not by the time they're in prison even better so we're working very closely with the police on this and very closely with the prison um, system on this but this has to come from government so if you hear about our charity adhd liberty and you want to donate and help us please do lots of people donate because lots of people are passionate about this and we're very very grateful for all the help we can but really what we want what we want to do is to get people to understand why these boys are in prison with adhd on the whole it is not for the major crime it's not the murders it's not the rapes it's not the gbh with intent mostly mostly it is the minor petty stuff it's nicking things breaking things kicking things criminal damage nicking from shops all that sort of stuff and fighting fighting massively and also drug dealing because there's a big buzz for with drug dealing so a lot of adhd people do deal because they make a lot of money that way so these are not your rapists and your murderers and your paedophiles on the whole these are petty petty criminals and they are going to keep going in and out until we change. It's not them that can change. We need to change the system. We need to change the fact that they are not being assessed and diagnosed and medicated when they should be. Once we get that right, everybody wins. Number one, the prison system will halve. If not, 75% of it will close down. We don't need to be locking up all these ADHD people. On top of that, there'll be a lot less crime. Because as I said, all these boys are out nicking purse nicking purses nicking wallets nicking watches there'll be a lot less crime a lot, a lot less robberies a lot less burglaries and a lot less muggings so surely that's a good thing and also the cost on locking up people will be so much reduced so the government will make a lot of money by actually bothering to test these people for adhd getting them on the meds and getting them out of the prison system it's not difficult it's not rocket science and we my team with my psychiatrists with my police with the prison staff we've got with the neurosurgeon and our charity adhd liberty we are absolutely determined to change this system when i left the prison service in 2016 not by choice they don't like me the prison system because i care about adhd people too much so the prison system don't like me much so when they got rid of me in 2016 I swore to all those boys that I will never, ever forget you. I will come out here and I will plug away and I will make damn sure that we change the laws, that we get you tested for ADHD on these induction wings. And actually, since I've come away, I've now met a lot of the police who are also very pro getting people diagnosed. So now we're trying to get people assessed even before that, when they first go into a police station. I will not give up this will change these offenders will be tested for in prisons and on induction wings and i will not go away until that happens so if you hear anything about adhd liberty please support us because this is massive it affects everybody in this country absolutely everybody and it's something that needs to happen and needs to happen soon because it's way 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 overdue